Today I'm going to a place in Southern California, Los Angeles area, Hollywood, right here, and the location where I'm going is right here at this intersection. This is the intersection where two police officers were kidnapped March 9th, 1963. That would be 45 years ago today. Policeman Ian Campbell and his partner Carl Hettinger. They were patrolling the area in an unmarked police car. And according to Joseph Wamba's book, The Onion Field, this book right here, he said that Ian Campbell was driving an unmarked police car and his partner Carl Hettinger were with him and they were near Gower Street. This here is Gower Street, and according to the book, they were going down an alleyway toward Carlos Street. Here's Carlos Street right here, and this is Gower Street. So when we look from the air, I can see that there was an alley coming down from the north to the south toward Carlos Street, and there was an alley coming from the south off of Hollywood Boulevard up north toward Carlos Street. Now, he didn't specify which one they were going down, but it was one of these. He was either coming up from the south from Hollywood Boulevard or down from the north toward Carlos Street. Now, if we go down to Street View over here, you can see that where there used to be an alley, there is no longer an alley right here. You can see it's been blocked off. If we leave the Street View and we go toward Carlos Street, you can see right here, on Carlos Street, this is where the alley used to be on this side, and there used to be an alley right here. So they were coming out of one of these alleys. I'm not sure which one. Now, according to the book, he said there were two criminals. These two guys right here, this guy here is Gregory Powell, and this guy here is Jimmy Lee Smith. They were driving in a 1946 Ford Coupe. And this here is a picture of the actual car. They were driving this car in the area, and there were two criminals looking for a, a liquor store to rob. Now, according to Joseph Wamba's book, the two criminals came up off of Hollywood Boulevard, headed north on Gower Street, and then made a left here on Carlos Avenue. And right here on this street, Vista Del Mar, they thought it dead-ended here, and I'll show you why. So the criminals, this is Gower Street up here, they were coming toward us, and they could see this right here. And at that time, this street, Vista Del Mar, turned to the right, and this apartment complex was not there, so it also turned to the left. But from their perspective, as they were driving up, to them it looked like a dead end. So what they did is they did a U-turn and started heading back down toward Gower Street. Now on their way down toward Gower Street, that was about the time that Ian Campbell and Carl Hettinger were coming out of one of these alleys, either this one here or this one here. And the two crooks in their car passed by right in front of them. And the first thing that the two police officers noticed was that it was 10 o'clock at night. There were two men driving in a the car. They had dark leather jackets on, dark hats on. They looked like crooks. They looked like criminals. So the police officers made their turn out, got behind them immediately, and hit them with the light. Like I said, it was an unmarked police car, so they would have had to have stuck the light up on top of the hood for them to get the attention of these two criminals. Now, right here is the location where the police car was parked and the crooks were pulled over right up here. And what ended up happening is the two criminals were able to hold the cops at gunpoint, take both their weapons from them, and then make Ian Campbell get into the front seat of the crook's car in the driver's side, drive the car with Gregory Powell in the front passenger seat pointing a gun at him, and in the back seat behind the driver, Carl Hettinger was kind of squished down behind the back seat, and sitting to his right in the rear passenger seat was Jimmy Lee Smith also with a gun holding him there. This is an actual photo taken the night that the two police officers were kidnapped right here. 
And if you look at the background, you can see this home, and it has this really right angled shaped porch here. You can see this window and this window. You can see this building back here with these look like vents up here high on the wall. Here's the light post. Here is the crossing pole holding up the crossing lights. And you can see these pipes right here that go around and hold these signals up at this crosswalk. And if we go back to Google Earth, you can see here, here is the house with that hard angled roof. Here are the windows. There's the building in the background with those vents right here. Here is the light post. And here is the pole holding up the lights for the crosswalk. And you can see everything is pretty much the same. So this is the location where the police car was stopped. And they would have been kidnapped right up over here on the sidewalk. I'm going to exit street view here. Head back north. So that would have occurred right here. This is where they would have been kidnapped right here. So what happened was Gregory Powell, who was in the front right seat holding a gun on Ian Campbell, the policeman driving, and Jimmy Lee Smith right here was in the right rear seat holding a gun on Carl Hettinger, who was kind of squished down behind the driver's seat. Gregory Powell told them to head up toward Bakersfield. So Ian Campbell did a U-turn, went down Gower Street, probably made a left on Franklin, right here, got on the 101, and headed north. Now at that time, the 101 didn't turn into the 170. They had to take the 101 over in this direction, and also in 1963, they did not have the 405. So they had to exit right here on this street, which is Sepulveda Boulevard, right here. And it was Sepulveda, Sepulveda Boulevard that took them all the way up through here. And keep in mind, 405 and the 5 freeway right in here did not exist at that time. They had to take a road that took them over the top through this area called the Grapevine. All the way through here, it was about a 90-mile drive from where they were picked up to where they ended up. Came down through here, the Grapevine, heading towards Bakersfield. And when they got to this area right in here, they took the 166, or the Maricopa Highway, west and started heading in this direction. Now, according to the book The Onion Field, they drove and they made a left turn on a dirt road. Now from here you can see there are a lot of dirt roads, so I wasn't sure what to look for. And these marks that I put in there I'll get into in just a minute. So what I did is I started looking at photos. And I started off with this photo first because this photo has a lot of clues. First and foremost you can see right here where these cars are and these people are standing. That is the exact location where Ian Campbell was murdered right here and I couldn't find the location. So what I did was I looked at this picture and I followed the silhouette of the hills right here. You can see there's this dome with a tiny peak and then it goes into another small dome then that comes down and goes into another dome and then it kind of comes down into this what I call the big canyon and just to the left of the big canyon is you have this divot and just to the left of the divot you have this area here which is what I would call the small canyon. So back here at Google Earth I thought okay I'm gonna go down to Street View and see if I can find the silhouettes of those hills and I dropped the Street View icon right about here and I looked off to the toward the hills and right here you can see if I go back to the photo the round hill with the little point little dome another dome comes down and around into this big canyon divot small canyon. Here on Google Earth you can see there's the first dome to the left, the small point, smaller dome, the next dome comes down into this canyon here. There's a divot there and then there's the small canyon right there. So I knew I was in the general area that was correct. Back here at the photo I started looking for other clues and there were a couple of clues that I found that were very very helpful. First and foremost was the small canyon here you can see from this photo where the murder took place this little dirt road is to the left of the small canyon. So back here at Google Earth I exited Street View and I started looking for the small canyon which would be this one here and the only road that's just to the left of it was this one. 
So I'm going to turn this back north. So you can see, here's the small canyon, and there is the road. So I knew that I had the approximate correct road. And then, according to Joseph Wamba's book, The Onion Field, they made a left turn off of the Maricopa Highway on a dirt road. So I went looking on this road, and what I found was that the road turning left comes down through here, and then it makes a right, and then it turns left again. But in his book, they never made a left, right, left. They made a left turn and went straight for quite a ways. The only road that lined up with that was this one here, coming across the field like this and down through here. Now, as I moved in closer, I could see that this road here, which I'm assuming has not moved since 1963, still has telephone poles next to it. And if you look across the road here, you can see telephone poles run through this field here where the road used to go. Back here on the photo, you can see the telephone poles running just to the right side of this road all the way down out of sight. So I was pretty certain that this was the correct road. And of course, back then, the 5 freeway did not exist, so they were able to drive, make their left turn here, and drive straight across and right down through here. Now, according to the book, it said that they they crossed a dirt road, which I would figure out was this dirt road, drove for a little while longer, crossed a second dirt road, which I figured out was this dirt road right here, and then they went just for a short while longer, and they had to stop because directly in front of them was a trench being dug where the Southern California Gas Company dug a trench to lay pipe for natural gas. They were laying a natural gas pipeline. So according to the book, they came up to that trench. Ian Campbell made a U-turn right in front of that trench, pointed his car in the opposite direction, and then they got out. And in this photo right here, you can see this was a reenactment. It's not very accurate, but this was a reenactment. You can see the telephone poles lining the road that they drove down. This is the area where they made their U-turn and parked roughly right in here. And off to the left, you can see part of the trench that was dug where they couldn't drive around because they were laying a natural gas pipeline there. And what happened was this. Ian Campbell got out of the car first. Carl Hettinger got out of the seat and stood next to Ian Campbell. E Carl Hettinger was here closest to the car. Ian Campbell would have been standing over here by the car. The two criminals got out on this side with guns pointed. Now, originally, the criminals said they were going to let both police officers go. They were going to get in their car and drive off. But what happened was Gregory Powell, this guy right here, came around the back of the car and walked up to Ian Campbell and asked him, have you ever heard of the Lindbergh Law? Ian Campbell said yes. And then this guy, right after he said that, raised his gun and shot Ian Campbell right in the face, got him right below the nose and above his upper lip, right in the middle. And he went down. At that moment, Carl Hettinger, being aware that his partner just got shot, screamed, turned around, and started running down this dirt road. And they were firing at him, but he was zigzagging down the road. Ian Campbell went over backwards. Carl Hettinger got away. And back here at Google Earth, he went running down this road and stopped along the fence and hid, into, hid inside the tumbleweeds and then crawled through a barbed wire fence and ran out, ran out into this field over here and, and hid. The two criminals went back, they shot Ian Campbell four more times in the chest to make sure he was dead, and then they drove down the road looking for Carl Hettinger. They assumed Carl Hettinger would be heading north, and Carl Hettinger knew that they would assume that, so he laid low in the field for a while, and as they drove by, it was almost midnight at that time, they drove by with flashlights looking for him, didn't see him, they went past him, Carl Hettinger got up and started running in a southwesterly direction away from them. Now back here on this photo, you can see this is looking toward the hills again, and they're doing a reenactment. This was the next day after they arrested Jimmy Lee Smith. Jimmy Lee Smith confessed to everything, and this is him here standing in handcuffs, showing them where it happened and pretty much how it happened. Now if you look at this photo, you can see the trench right here that is dug for the gas pipeline. That's why they couldn't drive any further. They had to do a U-turn here. Now. The reason I'm showing you this is because this was a very crucial clue for me to find the, lo the exact location of where Ian Campbell was murdered by these two criminals. And here's what I did. I went and I looked up the Southern California Gas Company's schematic for Kern County, 
and it showed a gas line running through these areas and that would have been the one that they were putting in at the time the murder took place. Now I'm not going to go into great detail but these red lines indicated certain places where I know the gas line crosses the road and one place for sure is this location right here and when you get in close enough you can actually see that's a piece of the gas pipeline right there. So when you line that up with other places where it crosses the road here and over here, it all comes across this point. Right in here where I'm about 99.9% .9 certain this is where the natural gas pipeline runs to this area right here. Which means that the car would have come down roughly in this area, done a U-turn somewhere in here. And Ian Campbell would have been shot, murdered, right about in this area right here. So that's about as precise as a location as I can get for the uh, horrible murder of policeman Ian Campbell. Now after Ian Campbell was shot, like I said, Carl Hettinger went running down the road and hid in the field. And the killers went driving around looking for him, but he was running in the opposite direction. The killers were all over this place out here. Now as Carl Hettinger was running, he heard a sound, and it happened to be a farmhand plowing the land in a bulldozer pulling a plow. He went up to him pleaded with him, please help me. The guy got him on the bulldozer, but it was too slow. They thought they could get there faster, so they started walking. And according to the book, if I understood it correctly, they started walking in this direction toward Mettler. But what happened is, is as they were walking, they could see the two criminals out there driving around in the fields, stopping every once in a while, getting out with flashlights, looking for Carl Hettinger. Those guys were wanting to kill him because they didn't want any witnesses. The farmhand and Carl Hettinger decided to go in the opposite direction and headed out over here and eventually after going a total of four miles total he ended up over here in this location at a house I'm not sure which one it was I think there was one house there at the time but today you can see that it looks like there's four of them there he went up the farmhand knocked on the door the farmer answered Carl Hettinger stepped up told him who he was what happened the farmer grabbed his shotgun and called the sheriff the sheriff came picked up Carl Hettinger, and the next day they arrested Gregory Powell and Jimmy Lee Smith. Now in 1979 they made a movie about it titled The Onion Field. And in this movie, Ted Danson was his acting debut. He played policeman Ian Campbell, who was murdered. John Savage played Carl Hettinger. James Woods played Gregory Powell. And an actor named Franklin Seals played Jimmy Lee Smith. And the movie is pretty much in line with the way the book was written, and the book was pretty much in line with with uh, the way it actually happened. So there you have it, the Onion Field killing of Officer or Policeman Ian Campbell happened 45 years ago today for Google Earth.